Hi, I'm Tim Shryak and a solutions architect here at Network to Code, and I will be diving into chat ops that we have as part of the Nautobot app platform and uh, how we can use chat ops to extend our abilities as network engineers and beyond the network engineering team. And uh, hopefully we can uh, demonstrate today why chat ops should be a first class citizen and uh, shouldn't be just pushed off to the side as uh, something that we think about as an add-on feature, if you will, right? Uh, so specifically uh, looking at kind of the overall flow that we're talking about today, this we're going to be diving into Nautobot as a platform for network automation apps and our ability to use Nautobot to deploy and develop uh, applications that we can extend past just the base functionality of source of truth. So the app platform is intended to be an architecture which we can uh, build applications on top of. And our goal is to be able to uh, save time for development so that the framework provides you with the methodologies that you need uh, and you can reuse tooling that's there uh, to more rapidly deploy functionality across your uh, solution. So if we take a look at advantages, right, uh, it's highly flexible. So we can have uh, lightweight applications uh, that are just interacting with small components or maybe just simply extending uh, the Nautobot UI as an example, all the way up to uh, complex apps uh, that maybe we're integrating with external tools like the ServiceNow CMDB uh, or other automation processes that we may have or require in our particular environment. Uh, with all of the goal of saving time, faster time to deployment, faster time to getting back to what it is that we actually do, which is run and operate uh, production scale networks. Uh, just a little dive into uh, what we see as the app platform. Uh, and it is, again, this idea of being able to interact with the uh, platform as needed, depending on what our requirements are for the application we want to develop whether it's a lightweight or complex, right? So we have this ability to use uh, just these lightweight extensions, or if we're going all the way down to the API and Nautobot to really drive the power of the automation, uh, we have those abilities in the, in the, uh, in the app platform. So let's take, take a look at chat ops, right? And what is it that we see as the future of chat ops and why we think it should be uh, considered a key component of your automation strategy? So it gives us uh, access to information in a simple, uh, easy to use interface that you already have. You've already got it installed on your laptop, on your phone, on your tablet. Uh, it exists ubiquitously across your environment, right? All of your users already have it. Um, it's not some new piece of software we need to go install. Um, and it's not something we need to train people on how to use, already know how to use it. Uh, we just need to bring people up to speed on the commands that are now available to them. We can also use it as a single pane of glass into various components of our automation strategy. Uh, so maybe you have uh, you know, our source of truth, uh, not a bot. Uh, we've got maybe some different telemetry uh, uh, tooling, uh, maybe some different monitoring uh, tools, and we can access all of this information from one single place uh, and giving our users the power of this data to be able to do their jobs. And again, you know, across, it's working across whether regardless of what the uh, uh, form factor is, whether it's your phone, your laptop, or your tablet. Then we can empower users. And this is a, a really key component of something to think about, which is as it stands today, most likely when someone outside the network team needs a piece of information about the network, they either call someone in networking, uh, you know, chat you in, uh, chat a person directly, um, or open a ticket. Right? So there's a lot of inbound communication coming to the network team trying to get information. And we can empower users to go get that information on their own, um, whether they're part of the network team or otherwise. Uh, we can also very easily and simply control what a given user can do. Uh, so we may say that uh, someone in the server team is able to not only see information about the switch ports that their server is connected to, they can actually manipulate those switch ports. So they can update the trunk port, add a new VLAN to the trunk that's permitted to their server. We can control all of these things through the chat application and allow the server team to do these types of functions in a highly scripted uh, fashion by which we know they can make safe changes uh, without screwing anything else up. They're not gonna mess around with our uplinks. They're not gonna mess around with the storage team links. They're only working on the devices that are the uh, switch ports that relate to them. 
saving time, right? So just being able to do things faster uh, because we only go to a single place, we can quickly get that information we need. Uh, we don't need to go, you know, log in to a particular UI or remember where do I find this piece of information? I know I just always go to my chat app, start typing in there and I can get the information that I need. And the same idea, most of the time as engineers and network operators, we are on call at some point. And uh, inevitably you are not gonna have your laptop with you but I'm pretty sure 100% of the time you have your phone with you. And from your phone, you can use the chat app to find information and potentially solve problems, right? So we can look up circuit ID information. You know, maybe you've got a call that, hey, you know, we've got a circuit down. And of course you don't know the circuit ID to call the provider, um, but you can look it up real fast on your phone, get that information out to the provider and get the ticket open to solve that problem, right? So just simplifying your life that, you know, maybe, maybe you don't always have to drive back home every time you get a call when you on call and you don't have your laptop with you as example. Or maybe it frees you uh, that you can go to the beach. Um, you don't have to stay tied at home, right? Uh, with when you're on call that weekend. And then collaboration. Uh, this is another one that's kind of interesting to think about, which is, you know, when we're troubleshooting an issue, inevitably uh, we're all kind of gathered around the one person who's driving in the center, right? And that one person's kind of driving the troubleshooting, or maybe, you know, we're experimenting, doing something new. And the rest of us are kind of like trying to observe on their screen. Uh, this way we can all observe uh, through the chat application as uh, he or she is entering commands into the chatbot. We can see what's happening uh, individually. We can scroll back through the history as our memory gets triggered about something or we want to look, or maybe we're late to the party. Um, you know, we can easily get up to speed on what's been done, what people have already entered, what about people have already looked at. So really just a great way to collaborate uh, as we work through issues. And then also for uh, folks that are learning. Uh, so, you know, maybe uh, we have a junior level person or someone that's just not as familiar with a particular area, uh, they can sort of shoulder surf uh, through the chat uh, to be able to see what's happening and understand and learn how a senior level person approaches this particular problem. Any kind of questions about like why we believe chat ops should be a uh, first class citizen? If not, I will carry on. And uh, kind of looking at just the overview of uh, chat ops. Uh, so out of the box, we support uh, multiple chat applications. Uh, so Microsoft Teams, uh, Slack, WebEx Teams, all supported um, through the Notabot platform. So we have this multi-chat ability. Uh, it's you know, obviously uh, different uh, environments are using different applications. And so we want to be open to that. Uh, and then the ability to you know, get this information regardless of that particular chat application uh, and present it back to the users. Right? So this is our, our basic uh, concepts that we have here. And then finally, uh, some of the commands that we currently have. So right now we have our uh, ability to interact with Notabot. So our top level command uh, is a slash Notabot in the chat, uh, in the chatbot. And we will be adding uh, additional top level commands for Ansible and Grafana in the near future. Uh, and then sub level commands that are here as well, as you can see uh, here on the screen that are available particularly for Notabot. But it is extensible. So uh, people in the community, uh, or if you're a developer or DevOps minded person, uh, you know, can easily go in and extend uh, the functionality of the chatbot uh, yourselves as well. So this is something that uh, either we can do as custom development, uh, or you can uh, empower the community to develop these uh, fun features and functionalities also. Okay, so let's move into a little demo, kind of just see what the power of chat is. Uh, and uh, start off with that top level, uh, not a bot command. Uh, and again, uh, as far as, as we see using the bot, um, you don't need to remember all the sub-level commands. Um, you just need to remember that top level command. So in this case, we're doing a slash not a bot. And uh, we can see all the options that are available to us. So one of the examples that uh, was shown, John was showing in one of the earlier uh, videos was about looking at racks, I'm sorry, looking at racks for a, uh, a given site. So let's take a look at what that looks like when we do it from the chat side rather than from in the Nautobot UI. Uh, again, you don't need to know or remember all the details of the command, uh, all the subcommands. You can be presented with the drop-down list, which is really helpful for uh, folks that maybe aren't as familiar with the environment, or maybe you just don't remember the code for a given site or device. Um, so let's just randomly pick one here from the top of the list, and uh, let's pick a rack. So we'll just pick uh, the BKK 101 and take a look at this rack that we have uh, in uh, the uh, source of truth. 
And of course, we're getting a text representation of the rack here, but you can see all the rack units uh, and the devices that have been installed in those uh, rack units here presented in the uh, text format for us. Super helpful. I can imagine this, uh, you know, as a network engineer or DC ops uh, person, uh, potentially you're out in the data center and, uh, you know, where is this rack, uh, unit uh, device supposed to go? Um, or I'm trying to locate a given device. Where is it? Uh, I can quickly look it up on my phone or my tablet, find that information and go track down the device uh, as I'm working out there. Um, you know, not necessarily always having to go back to the laptop. And then just uh, going back to other uh, options that we have available as we look through these top level commands, let's take a look at uh, this next one here, which is get circuits. Um, and this is another one that I see particularly useful uh, when we think about the uh, troubleshooting scenario, as I was mentioning earlier. Um, you know, we're on call, it's, uh, it's the weekend and we've got an outage on a circuit and we need to open a ticket uh, with the provider for a given uh, circuit that's is currently down. And of course, we don't remember the circuit ID when we call the provider. Um, so quick, real quick, we can look that up, uh, find the information, present to the uh, provider and hopefully get our ticket opened, right? And I'll also just kind of like to point out as well, as you become familiar with the chatbot, you don't necessarily have to use the drop downs. Um, if it's faster for you to type, if you're one of the really quick typers, uh, you could potentially just type that whole command out um, as opposed to using the drop downs like I've been doing. So uh, this example there, or potentially uh, for really common things, you might make a shortcut. Right? And uh, extending this idea of you know, other options that we have available to us, in, let's take a look at one more uh, here as I am running short on time. But let's take a look at this other one of Git interface connections. This is an interesting concept um, if you're not familiar with it in uh, Nautilot or in the source of truth in general, uh, is the ability to see the connections that we have between two different devices. So in this case, let's again just drill into VKK as our choice and take a look at the edge router there. And we will be presented with the list of connections that we see between these devices uh, as far as the connections there. Super useful for troubleshooting, uh, for understanding uh, how the network is connected, uh, saves us a lot of time potentially. And again, it's very easy to find here in the chat application. So Tim, let's play, play scenario real quick. Sure. Um, so I'm a, I'm a server admin, I'm getting ready to build um, uh, anything. Uh, server. And I want to validate that my VLAN is is configured correctly. So I don't want to call you. I want to go to this and I want to say, hey, give me, you know, what switch am I connected to, whatever, and validate it. Now, absolutely. can I also not just validate it, going back to what we talked about before, because the intended state might have deviated from what is in an Autobot. Can I query what's in Nautobot and also have it do a validation on the switch so, itself? Yeah, so so at the moment, the uh, chatbot is intended for querying Nautobot. Just Nautobot. Uh, yes, um, okay. as we uh, add the features with uh, Ansible, uh, that functionality would become possible. Yes. Okay. So, actually, Tim, if I may, actually, Go ahead, Damian. right yeah, yeah. now, you know, at the heart of it, we're, we're chipping with some command, but it's really something where you know want to build a community, want to build a, a library of that, and we already have customers that created their own command that are querying the internal using no one here, connecting multiple devices, okay. gathering information, even connect to multiple data source, you know, process all that and just present the, the results. So it's actually very easy to uh, to get started with that today, and and the goal is that we won't just provide everything. You know, we we'll provide more examples are the, the most common use cases, and then it's really for everyone to to embrace and, and extend with their own use cases. Thank you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions here? I have. Okay. And uh, just kind of as a, a, a oh, by the way, um, as we also think about uh, one of the questions we commonly get is compliance and security concerns around using chat to power uh, network changes or even network information. Uh, and so one of the things you can see here is the command history is being kept over on the Nautobot side. So everything that I was doing, um, and there's some other folks in here as well, uh, using the bot, uh, you can see is being uh, tracked um, in uh, Nautobot. So we can see all of this information here. We are keeping our records as well as we are able to uh, very granularly control what a user, a given user can do. 
uh, to uh, address potential issues that uh, our security teams may raise with um, you know, this kind of power that we're giving through the chat application. And then of course, uh, someone here, as uh, Damien, uh, chimed in with, you can always uh, give the bot a little thumbs up to let him know that you're happy with the work that he's been doing for you. Um, just you know, kind of give the, makes the bot feel good. You know, it's definitely, definitely nice to do with the chat application. Uh, and finally, here before I finish and hand off uh, to the next uh, presenter, um, just, oh, by the way, uh, this is uh, everything I've been doing here in the chatbot is available to you in the Network to Code Slack channel. Um, so you can see this other chat uh, channel here, Netbot Chat. Uh, if you want to go play with it yourself, you're welcome to do so.